I've raised red wigglers for their castings for a number of years now, and I have several worm bins, but by far my favorite is my worm in. The worm in uses a flow through design that has many advantages. As you regularly add food and bedding to the top, the worms migrate upward, leaving their castings below. And to harvest the castings, you just loosen the drawstring on the bottom and the castings drop down to a bin below. There may be some worms left in the castings, but most will be higher up where the food is. In addition, the worm in is made of a breathable material, which in combination with the flow through design keeps air in the system and helps prevent the growth of anaerobic bacteria and the smelly mess that comes with them. So I really like my worm in a lot, much more than my nested Rubbermaid worm bins. But to move from my Rubbermaid bins to worm ins would be expensive. I'd have to buy several worm ins, and at $69.99 each plus shipping, that would be costly. So I started thinking about building my own flow through worm bins, or better yet, converting my current Rubbermaid bins into flow through bins. Luckily for me, I wasn't the first to think about doing this, and I found a number of great designs on vermicomposters.com. After reviewing several of the designs, I decided upon an approach that would convert this Rubbermaid worm bin into this flow-through worm bin. So let's talk about the basic design of this flow-through system and how I put it together with these simple tools and supplies I already had around the house. Like with the worm in, as you add food and bedding to the top bin, the worms move higher and higher, leaving their castings below. The castings are then harvested through this hole in the bottom of the bin, thanks to a few simple modifications. Let's talk about modifications to the bottom bin first. As you can see, a hole has been cut in the front of the bottom bin. This is where castings will be harvested. To cut the hole, I first outlined where I wanted to cut using a black marker. I then drilled holes to enable me to cut out the area with tin snips. I made sure to leave enough of a lip on the bottom to hold castings and any liquid that might drop into the bottom. Also, above this hole, seven half-inch PVC pipes run through the bin from front to back, forming a shelf upon which the top bin will rest. These holes are two and three quarter inches apart on center, equidistant from the top, and were drilled with a 13 16 inch flat bit for a very snug fit. The PVC pipes were cut to length with a hacksaw. The only modification to the top bin was to cut out the bottom of the bin with tin snips as shown here. Air holes had already been drilled in the lid and around the top rim of this bin to ensure enough airflow for the worms. The top bin was placed on the PVC shelf and grocery bags were placed in the bottom of the top bin. I could have also used newspapers. The grocery bags will serve to keep the contents of the top bin in place for the time being. I then put the contents of the original bin back in the newly converted bin. You might think that once the grocery bags break down, the contents of the top bin will simply fall into the bottom. But the weight of the material will cause the castings to clump together in a solid mass, and the PVC pipe should be sufficient to hold the castings in place for the most part. Of course, some of the castings will fall through, but that is fine. To harvest castings, I'll just reach through the hole in the bottom bin and tease them out from between the PVC pipes. My hope is that this flow through design will make it much easier to harvest castings. Also, the fact that the castings will be exposed to air on the bottom and top will prevent anaerobic bacteria from growing and causing a smelly mess. As a result, I'll have much better worm castings for my garden. Before I go, I should point out one design flaw that occurred to me only after I finished converting this bin. If I wanted to move it and didn't think first, I might pick it up from the top handles. If I did this, the contents of the top bin would fall out after it was lifted off of the PVC shelf. To prevent this from happening, these two bins need to be securely bolted together. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.